Hello, statistics student. This video is for 2.2 part 2. Uh, in the last video of 2.2, we learned how to um, make a histogram from data using Statdisk. And uh, this uh, other graph, other than histogram, that we can use to describe or summarize data. Um, what are the these other graphs? One is called a frequency hist a polygon or relative frequency polygon. So what happened is instead of using bars, so basically instead of using bars, you use points, um, you know, use the midpoint of each bars and then connect them in a, in a, as a line graph so that it shows some like areas. It shows an area. So um, sometimes we want to use it because if you use histogram, you can only show one histogram for one set of data whereas if you use line graph you can have multiple okay it's used usually to compare two uh, data sets um, it's also nicer to you so you can see the distribution of the data nicer like where is the most data cluster around um, so before we move on to um, um, 2.3 the most important thing we want to learn here is after we grab a histogram we say uh, we are very interested if there's outlier as as well as what is the sh shape of the distribution meaning where are uh, most data cluster around so we have um, these terms that we would use normal distribution means the data are symmetrical and bell shaped that means like this one normal most of the data is in the middle you have some in the low end, in the low end. You have some in the high, some data in the high end, but most of the data cluster in the middle. Skewed it to the right. Skewed it to the right would be there's a tail. There's a right tail uh, where most data are in the left side, actually on the low end. You have most data in the low end, but there's just a few in the high end. We call them right skew or skewed to the right most data are on the low low, low values skew to the left is when your data is mostly in the high value and you seems like you have a tail it's kind of like a skew um, on the left so we call it skew to the left look at the tail okay uniform is when data does not cluster around any number it's evenly distributed that you have equal frequency of one two three all these classes so know these uh, terms, and of course, if a data is normally distributed, we have a lot of mathematical tools to analyze those data. Okay. Um, when you are uh, going to more advanced uh, statistics, you will learn uh, a skill to analyze skill data also. Um, the last part of 2.2 .2 is time series graph. Uh, we say if the, if the data are collected over time, we do not want to summarize it. We want to use the, um, a, uh, a time series graph to plot the, the up and downs of the data so that we can see when it is increasing, when is it decreasing. So, um, so it is easy to see the trend. So although it is up and down, but you can see that there is a downward trend. So data are represented by lines. So we do not use, usually use uh, bars. Case, but this is not very important. You just need to know um, the times usually is on the x-axis. Okay. Um, you can graph time series graph by Excel. So uh, you can look at my uh, example here or um, the steps here. So this is not required for our class. So the next part is 2.3 and 2.4 is concentrating on a concept called percentile. And the most important thing in 2.3 and 2.4 is look at how to ac actually formally analyze a data called an outlier. So we have been talking about, oh, we graph a histogram. If there is some data that are far away from the rest of the bars, then it's an outlier. But um, you can change the bars, um, you know, bars width. So you, in one histogram, you may be saying, oh, this number is an outlier, and the other histogram, you might not. So what is the, you know, um, agree, agree upon a way to classify an outliers? So it turns out that we have to study locations of data by looking at uh, um, concept called percentile and quartile. 
So what is a percentile? Percentiles、uh, are measures of location.、Uh, you have the first percentile up to the ninety-nine percentiles. So these numbers divide a data into one hundred groups with one percent of values in each group. So if X is at ninetieth percentile, say for example, you do a standardized test. You know, in standardized tests, they like to tell you not your score but your percentile also, and it is at ninetieth、um, percentile. That means ninety percent of the data are less than you. You are greater than ninety percent of data. You are more than your 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 points. Your values is more than ninety percent of data. If you are at the ten percentile, you are only more than ten percent of the data value. Okay, so but notice percentile does is not the same as percentage. Percentage is what score you have relative to the total score, but percentile is comparing you with the rest of the data. Um. So other than percentiles, which divide numbers into one hundred parts, because you can have the first percentile up to ninety nine percentile. There's、uh, several percentiles that are very important. And we give them a special name called quartiles because we divide them into a whole list of data into quarts, into four parts. So、um, let's look at make it a little bigger. So quartiles. Quartiles are also measure of location, but you divide your data into four groups with twenty five percent of data into each group, not one percent. So. Quartile one, Q one, is the first quartile, so that、um, it's greater than twenty five percent of data, but it is less than seventy five percent of data. Quarter two is also called the median; it's the middle in the mid middle of the data set. It's fifty、uh, percent of the data is greater than quartile two; fifty percent is less than that. Quartile three is the called the third quartile, or actually it's P seventy five also. It separates the bottom seventy-five percent of value from the top twenty-five, so it is at top twenty-five, but it's greater than seventy-five percent of data. So, in order to you know、uh, know how the data are separated into, we have a special term or a, a group of numbers called five number summary. Five number summary. The five number summary is five number that you can find from a data minimum. Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. One, two, three, four, five. So if you have this five number, your data will be divided into four groups with 25% from each group. Okay. So、uh, graphically, you can think of this is your number line of your x value,、um, and data spread out differently, right? So You will divide.、Uh, the lowest number is minimum, and then the highest number is maximum. And then you have these number.、Um, this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3. In each of this range, there's 25 percent of data here. 25 percent are here. 25 percent and 25 percent. Okay. And there is another number called IQR, interquartile range, which is the width. Of the middle, fifty percent. Why are we doing that? Because this is the number that help us to determine an outliers. So later on, we'll talk about how to do that. So any so IQR is a number that in, indicates the spread of the middle half or middle per fifty percent of data. It's the difference between Q three minus Q one, Q three minus Q one. Um. A box plot shows graphical. So, and then another things that we can do is call a box plot. So, if we want to、uh, show how data are spread out, instead of writing like twenty five percent, twenty five percent, we use a box to show the middle fifty percent and then two whisker to show the、uh, first twenty five percent and the last twenty five percent. So, it's called a box plot. Box. That shows Q1 and Q3 with Q2 in the middle, and then whisker shows the、uh, first 25 percent, and、uh, Q3 to the maximum is the 
last the highest 25% of data. So how can I find these if I have a set of data? Because ultimately, I want to use it to find outliers. So let's uh, first step is to find how to find out the five number summary and graph a box plot. Um, so we can actually do this by explore data. Enter the data into your data into uh, stat this. Okay, so these are the so this is an example where is an exercise number of minutes a, a group of student exercise. So some people didn't exercise, some people exercise twenty minutes, some exercise um, three hundred minutes, five hours uh, daily, five, five hours daily. Maybe that person is a coach or someone. So let's um, go to Statis. This is Statis, right? And we have online. This is my old data. I'm not. I don't really want to use it anymore. So I clear all of it. So I have it blank, and then I'm gonna Control V, copy my exercise times in a column one, and to graph a box plot, I just do explore data, and it's in column one. Evaluate. So this will show me the five number summary and the box plot. Five number summary is here, box plot is here. So let's copy it down. Uh, find the five number summary. So 0, 20, 40, 60, 300. 0, 20, 40, 60, 300. So we copy it over here. They actually list it here. Okay, five number. And then they graphically have 0, 40, 60, uh, 20, no, 20, 40, 60, and then 300. Okay. And then I copy, screen print this, and then copy it over. Um, and then they also ask us to see what percent, what percent of student exercise from 0 to 60 minutes. Okay, so we say we, let's label this 0, um, This zero twenty well forty sixty and then three hundred. So exercise from zero to sixty. So sixty is a Q three, right? So Q three is seventy five percent because it's seventy five percent. Twenty five, twenty five, twenty five, seventy five percent. And what about what percent of student exercise between twenty to sixty? Twenty to sixty is just the box, so that's the middle fifty percent. That's 50%. Uh, C, 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 C. Do I have it here? Yes. Q1 to Q3 is the middle 50%. Um, okay, so now this is the important part. How can I define a value as an outlier? So the way we define something as an outlier is if we spread away from Q1 and Q3 a lot. How much is a lot? 1.5 times of IQR. So if I have a, a data, it is above Q3 by 1.5 times of IQR, then I say that is the highest number that is not an outliers. If it is over this number, then it's an outliers. And, um, and also if I have a number that's below Q1 by 1.5 times of IQR, that is also an outlier. Okay, so let's uh, try to do this. For example, I have the data here. I'm going to use this criteria to check. Maybe I think 300 may be an outlier, but I'm not sure about 120. So let's use that calculation to figure if it's an outlier. So I'll talk about this in the next video.